Well, if you've been keeping up with the Tour de France, you will have noticed that on the TT bikes, they run different chain rings. They run chain rings that are much, much bigger, usually 58 or 60 tooth chain rings on the front. Now, why is it that the teams fit these rings to their bikes? Well, let's roll our intro and let's have a bit of a discussion why they do that. Well, every rider is easy using a 58 or a 60 chain tooth on their big ring on the front. Now, the reason why they're doing this is not because they're going any faster. It's got to do with efficiency. And there's a number of efficiency gains that they get from doing this. There's two major factors that give them more efficiency with setting up these big rings and different cassettes on the back because what the mechanic is trying to achieve is they're trying to align the chain really straight like this on the cassette. So what they need to do is, is work out what is going to be the average speed or the speed that the rider is most going to be doing on the track and they probably do calculations of the gradient or whatever and they would work all that out prior and then they would set the front chain ring and the rear cassette, the, the cogs on the cassette. So what they do is, is they'll get that speed matched to their cadence that the rider normally rides, so that chain stays dead straight. So there's not any bending in the chain like this. There's not, the chain's not bending like this, as, as we get when we cross chain. And that gives them the maximum efficiency of chain alignment. Now the second reason they do this is because when you have a bigger cog, you actually have more tooth engagement on the chain. Now, I mean, I don't know if you can imagine it, you know, if you've got a bigger, a bigger cog, the chain is on that ring for a longer period. And what that does is it spreads out the force across the chain. So it's not putting so much force on any specific link. If you had a smaller chain ring or a smaller cog, the chain is, is having to put the load through a lot more fewer pins and that makes it less efficient. Now the also, the other thing that actually helps with that as well is, is the actual bending of the chain. You know, if the chain has to go like this, like this, like this, it's a very small, but you have extra frictional losses in those, those links moving all the time, like this is the going around a very small cog. But if you go around a big cog, it's just moving far less. So the chain is not actually moving or doing anything unusual if it's aligned straight and it's going around a bigger cog. Whoops! No way those photos jersey. I have one right here. Yep, and this one could be yours. These are not sourced from any of those third party manufacturers like Spring. They're sourced from a boutique jersey manufacturer in Thailand. I've bought the product myself. I've used the product, really good quality. So guys, support the channel so we can get more products to review and I can keep that content coming free to you. So in conclusion, you have, if you have a course where it has quite mild gradients and it's very, it, the, the ride is keeping into a fairly consistent variance of speed, you can set your cogs and your gearing up like this so the rider has to move its gears around the center and mostly stays in the center of that cog. So you're minimizing the, the cross chaining and you're also getting efficiency from the bigger gears. And this is why they do it. And they, they can get like three, four, five watts extra out of this. It's not a lot, but it all adds up when you have a TT and you're riding against the clock and drafting doesn't come into it. But it does also beg the question why some brands, example SRAM, are going the other way. They've gone to smaller front chain rings and they've got a 10 tooth cog on the back of their 12 speed. Now, I believe the reason they did that is because they didn't want to remanufacture a different free hub so they could just pinch their, their mountain bike hub and put it on so there was no extra tooling and that had a 10 cog on it. So what they did is they just redesigned the front chain rings to get the same ratios with the 10 cog. But in reality, the actual drive tank will be less efficient than the Campagnolio and the Shimano drive trains. Well, anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it and I will see you next vid. Cheers.